What do you think, Rye? Another one? Yes. Your whole life is permanently different when you become a parent of a child with special needs. Ryan uses a wheelchair. He can't walk. He can't talk. There's a lot of physical therapy, uh, speech therapy, occupational therapy. There is development, but it's very, very slow. And it requires therapy. One of the wonderful things was we had pretty generous therapy benefits. But that suddenly changed. His therapy center said to us, it, Ryan might not have therapy coverage starting on January 1st. Under Wisconsin's state insurance plan, therapy would no longer be covered for children like Ryan, who were born with a disability rather than acquiring it later. First, I just didn't believe it. And then I got angry when I saw that it was true because it made no sense except to save money on the backs of children. They were incredulous. They were so deeply hurt. The Shoemakers and other families turned to Meg Gaines at UW-Madison's Center for Patient Partnerships. And it was just like meeting a friend who was suddenly going to be on your side and was going to walk you through it. We help people with life-threatening and serious chronic illnesses get the care they need and find their way while the storm is raging outside while at the same time educating graduate professional students, future doctors, lawyers, nurses, social workers, industrial engineers, any graduate student who has an interest in the future of healthcare. You get very different perspectives. You learn to value other people and working in a team. I was just calling to follow up with you on that conversation. Really get hands-on experience working with people. Students learn to advocate, helping patients connect to medical, legal, or financial resources going through the pros and the cons of each options, and then letting them make that decision. It was an opportunity to kind of step into the patient's shoes. The core of our mission is to train students to be different people when they go forward into their professions. To have some idea of what the patient is going through. It's about kneeling in front of someone to help them. It's the kind of help Meg couldn't find when she battled cancer 20 years ago. They said there are 12 tumors we can see. That probably means there's another 12 tumors we can't see. Go home and think about the quality, not the quantity of your remaining days. My kids were 18 months and four. So I went home and got mad and went on a Shakespearean tour of healthcare centers. Her tenacity paid off, and an unconventional surgery ended up saving her life. I don't think anybody could guarantee me that I wasn't going to die, but they could guarantee me that they were going to give me every shot they knew how to give me and they were going to be with me in the process. And we were going to think smart and we were going to think hard and we were going to look wide. That's not how our healthcare system set up. There was no one there to prepare me for the journey. That's why she founded the center, to help patients with whatever they may need on the journey. She really helped us think through what our various steps might be. We still felt a little like David and Goliath, but David seemed a little bit bigger when, <laughs> when we had Meg on our side. We want patient voices to be reflected in the future of healthcare. After hearing appeals from affected families, the state insurance board reversed its decision and agreed to continue providing therapy to children born with a disability. Which was stunning. Well, we were thrilled. <laughs> I think quite a bit surprised. We couldn't believe it. It's about really changing healthcare at its core. We didn't just get Ryan's therapy reinstated. All the kids who are under the state plan now have this therapy. So we were the case, but the cause was changing things more broadly. We solve it on a broader policy level. So the issue doesn't come up again. It was inspiring to the students to say, hey, you know, this actually can work. Every day that my son has therapy, I'll, I'll be thrilled that she was able to help us. To be present with people and to abide with them in times where they really struggle is an enormous gift. The essence of what we do is put the patient back in the center of healthcare. And one of my generous donors said to me, you caught a wave 20 years ago. No one was on this wave. Damn, that was a good wave to pick, because look, the whole world is talking about this now.